God for you. I thank God for um, your, um, your pastor for inviting me to come out and, um, and that he would trust me in this sacred place here. I thank God for your first family and um, your first lady. She's so I saw her in the choir. There she goes. <laughs> um, and also, I thank God for this wonderful choir and that powerful youth choir that you have. Amen. Amen. And so, thank you. Thank you. Happy Mother's Day to all of you mothers. And um, I would say happy um, Mother's Day. And for those who struggle with Mother's Day because perhaps they lost someone, um, I know that the Lord will heal your heart, but you know, this is a difficult day. And then for those who feel like they didn't have a good mother, well, you know what the Lord provides Amen. in ways that we can never understand. So sometimes we're looking for something and God provides it in another way. And so I just thank God for mothers, period. Um, um, your pastor earlier was talking about um, his grandmother. And um, he mentioned grandmothers, and I, I remember my great grandmother. And my great grandmother, she was, she died when I was young, but she was in her 90s when she passed away. And she was a praying mother. <laughs> and that's what I remembered about her. She prayed, she sung, and she would kind of grab you and pray. But I believe that her prayers reached heaven. Amen. And I mean, I believe that I would not be where I am today, who I am today, if she had not been praying those many years ago, right? Amen. And so I believe that some of her prayers fall through the clouds and to the, uh, from the heavens and falls on our family so often because so many things could have, should have, but didn't happen. Amen. Amen. <laughs> and so um, I, I, I want to just say that Mother's Day is a special day for me as well. Today is my birthday. Aww. So I called my mother this morning and um, I was trying to say Mother's Day before she said happy birthday, but as soon as she picked up the phone, <laughs> she said happy birthday. But, um, but it's um, a special, I don't know if I'm, you know, my mother said I was her gift, but I don't know if she still feels the same way. <laughs> but uh, praise the Lord. Um, and so I want to bring greetings from my church, which is Covenant Baptist United Church of Christ. Um, it's located in um, South and Southwest. We're right there on the border in Ward 8 um, in the Bellevue community. My pastors are the Reverend Dr. Christine and uh, Dennis Wiley, where they serve together as equal pastors, senior pastors at Covenant. And so I thank God that they allowed me to come here today and worship and minister with you today. Also, um, I wanted, your pastor wanted me to say a little bit about the CISOs of Faith-Based Initiative. And he said he's been talking about the conference for four weeks. So that means I should see y'all here next Saturday, right? <laughs> if you're not in your own conference thing, so if you could be here. And the conference is uh, very important because we believe that one way that we can serve our community is building up our leaders. And this particular conference will talk about um, victim support services, it would talk about what, how to serve the reentry community, but also how to serve the persons in your, um, in your, in your own congregation. Because there are, we are not, you know, ignorant to believe that we don't have returning citizens in our own congregation. Yes, we do, and we have victims in our own congregation. How do we serve and minister to them? And so this conference will give us some insight on that. And I think that's important. Me, as a social justice minister, I believe that we're called to go out and do the work of God. We're not just called to come to worship and talk about the work of God, but we have, we're accountable about doing something. Amen? Amen. And so um, um, the conference is this Saturday, and I hope to see you there from um, um, 8.30 to be here at registration. It starts, I believe, at 8.30. Also, um, um, your pastor, let me just say this about your pastor. I met him back in January, and we had a advisory council meeting, and he came to the meeting, and um, I'm telling you, he has, he just jumps right in. <laughs> and he's been serving, I mean, uh, we have, the advisory council, we have very various objectives. And one of it is that we don't want to have meetings and talk about what we should do for re the reentry community, but we also want to have um, a committee that actually does the work. 
And, um, and if any committee that I lead is going to have some um, justice emphasis on it because um, it's good to give people things, but how do we remove structures that keep people in the same situation all the time? And that's part of what we're called to do when we talk about justice. How do we um, remove the obstacles that keep people in the same place? So if we feed them, that's fine, but how do we remove the obstacle, obstacles that keep them from being employed? Um, the, um, the structures and the systems um, that keep them from um, getting gainful employment because of the color of their skin, um, because of where they live, and, or because of their gender, whatever the case may be. And so um, um, your pastor, he has been a blessing. And I want you to know that, um, that we really appreciate the work that he's doing, um, partnering with the other churches in our cluster. We have about 36 other churches, so we really appreciate him. Amen. Amen. So I was, I, was, I was told to be here to preach, and so that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> um, let's have a word of prayer. Dear God. If you show up, Lord, then we show up set free. If you preach, Lord, we will be healed and restored. So preach, Lord. We ask this in your blessed name, Jesus Christ. Amen. And so our text today comes out of Matthew 28. talk about what happened. Amen? So uh, we are going to revisit that text because I think God is still speaking. I'm going to be reading verses 1 through 6. But I recommend on your own time that you read verses I mean, chapters 27 and 28 in its entirety to help you understand um, the complete understanding of the text. So Matthew 28, verses 1 through 6. I'll be reading from the NRSV version. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was gone, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the, the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake. For an angel of the Lord descending from heaven came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. The appearance was like, was like lightning, and his clothing was white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the woman, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised, as he said. <clears throat> Come see the place where, they, where, where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples. He has been raised from the dead, and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb and fear with fear and great joy and ran and tell the disciples. Verse 9. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came to him, took hold to his feet, and worshiped him. And verse 9, suddenly. Amen. Amen. So, usually when I preach, I'm a very analytical kind of person, but the Lord gave me a different kind of word today. So I need y'all to work with me. Amen? Amen. And I need a few amens here and there. <laughs> it helps me. But today, I, one of the things about resurrection is this thing called es eschatology. And I want to say, Eschatology just really means in the end we win. 
Amen. That's a, that's a wonderful thing, right? In the end, we win. And so we want to keep that in mind as we um, celebrate the resurrection, that God has already taken care of our situations. And so the, the text I would like to preach, I mean, the, um, the topic I would like to preach from today is called God Never Meant for You to Lose. God created us to be victorious. God never meant for you to be depleted, deleted, or disgusted. God never meant for us to be stressed out, broke, busted, and never to be trusted. God never meant for us to be frustrated, aggravated, humiliated, irritated, oppressed, repressed, suppressed, and depressed. God never meant for us to be walking around empty, heartbroken, head hurting, body aching, kidneys failing, disappointed, discouraged, and diabetic, having strokes and having heart attacks and dying prematurely. God created you to win. God created you to be a conqueror. God designed you for dominion. God designated you for a destiny, a dynamic deliverance. You are the head and not the tail. You are above and not beneath. You are a victor and not a victim. You are an heir of God and a joint heir with Jesus Christ. You are already seated in heavenly places. You are already alive, aware, and alert. You are destined to do, purpose to prosper, meant to master, assembly to achieve, to be blessed, you are too legit to quit. You are built to be blessed, and you are more powerful than your past. God never meant for you to lose. And the meaning of this message and the declaration of my God and your God is that our God is blessing us right now. God is keeping us right now, sustaining us right now us right now, informing us right now, because God never meant for you to lose. This is our constant message, our constant, constant reminder during the post-resurrection and the pre-Pentecostal period, that no matter how it looks on the fly days of our life, victory shall be ours, that Jesus won and you will too. Jesus overcame and you will too. Jesus got up and you will too. You see, if you are going to succeed in life, if you are going to see your dreams realized, if you are going to achieve your goals, if you are going to maximize your destiny, at some point you have got to get in your heart that God never meant for you to lose. Hear, hear it afresh right now that it's down, get it down in your spirits right now that all things are possible. Your life can be beautiful. Love can be meaningful. Pain is truly bearable. Trouble is endurable. Tragedy is transformable. Time is redeemable. Relationships are renewable. Rivers are crossable. Mountains are movable. Work is doable. Justice achievable, freedom is available, sickness is curable, sin is forgivable, goals are reachable, faith is sustainable, hope is believable, death is stoppable, victory is obtainable, church is viable, love is reliable, worship is enjoyable because Jesus is unstoppable. 
meant for you to lose. God didn't just create you to live defeated. God didn't just create you to walk around sad, pitiful, and pessimistic. God created you. He didn't create you to keep you alive just for the devil to walk all over your life. God never meant for you to lose. You might be struggling right now with circumstances that are present, problematic, and painful. But I came to give you some good news. That if you trust in God, if you walk in faith, whatever was ruined can be restored. Whatever the devil took from you, you can get it back. Whatever the devil took from you, did you hear me? You can get it back. It's not his. It belongs to you. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. What was messed up can be made up. Breakdowns can be breakthroughs in your life. Irritations can yield to innovation. Humiliations will surrender to hallelujah. And pain will take a back seat to praise because God never meant for you to lose. Going back to 
to work for the IRS. And John said, I'm going back over and to work for my father's fish market. All of them were deeply discouraged. And so that is in the Bible, y'all. <laughs> so you may as well be honest with each other today. All of us get discouraged sometimes. But if you're going to learn how to walk like a winner, we not only got to learn how to deal with our doubts, to dismiss our discouragement, but step three, we have to dispel our depression. Because life can land you in situations that will have you feeling frustrated, powerless, helpless, and hopeless. And in those moments when nothing seems to be working uh, like you want it to, that's when we get depressed. That's how the disciples felt. Because Thursday night, Jesus got arrested in the Garden of Gethsemane. Peter got so angry that he started fighting. In the Bible, it says that he pulled out his knife and wanted to cut somebody. <laughs> now, I'm looking at all the honest people in the room, you know. All the honest people in the room. Have you ever been in a situation that you got so mad that you were saying, somebody better come get me before I cut somebody? <laughs> that made you so mad that you start pulling off your Emory. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Take it off your shoes. <laughs> Get your Vaseline. Everybody who walked through defeat 
at some point in his or her life. But this day forward, I want you to remember that Jesus took a temporary defeat in order to give you a permanent victory. That's in the text. That's eschatology. You see, I dare you to tell your neighbor you are sitting next to a winner. was a worshiper. 